G'day all. Uh, my name's Philip Rouse, so I work for a company called Frothy CNC, and I'm partnered with Hex Technology, who have brought us all together to this conference. And thank you very much, Jean, for uh, organising this. This is incredible. Hello, Okay, so um, nearly it's nearly two years ago now that um, we got to a stage with Pixel 2 development that um, we, we actually thought the project was going to end and um, that was a little bit disappointing because there were a lot of people that were uh, designing systems around the cube and um, were looking forward to it. And I got introduced to a, a man named Gene and uh, we, uh, we got along pretty quickly and we uh, decided to form a bit of a partnership and get uh, Pixel 2 of the Cube to market and um, that was that was pretty cool. And, wait, how long ago was that now? It's 18 months, isn't it? 18 months, yeah. So uh, it, it feels like a long time in some ways but it's actually a very short time to, uh, to where we are now. Um, having quite a cool product and, um, and so many of you guys are using it and so many of you are using it in such creative ways. Um,大概在两年前我做开发出了这样的Pixel so many of you are now familiar with the uh, the cube. Um, we call the uh, so that's the actual cube is the the autopilot itself, and we tend to talk about Pixel Two being the cube with the carrier board. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. And uh, and the accessories that go with that. So the, the cube itself is a bit different to the autopilots that we've used before, and that's uh, basically with the, the modular structure. Uh, so the, the advantage of the modular structure, which I'll discuss uh, later, um, later in the presentation, is the ability to use the cube in other uh, products. So if your company is uh, concentrating on doing uh, drone deliveries or um, agricultural spraying or whatever your, your drone is intended for, rather than spending time concentrating on developing something that is a high risk um, area, as the autopilot is, you can focus on what you are actually trying to do with your um, unmanned aircraft. Uh,用我们的无人机飞控系统进行整合，就可以达到你想要的效果。而您只需要去专注于做您所工业领域中所呃所特定的某些功能，比如说农业的分享以及啊航测的摄像头的运用。so inside the cube, the cube is an aluminium uh, case, and inside the cube we have a vibration isolation system. The vibration isolation system in the cube actually has uh, two IMUs on the isolated section, 
and one IMU is uh, fixed, uh, so it is not isolated. And the reason we have um, the three is there are certain situations where a UAV will have um, characteristics that don't work with different sensors, and this gives us options for the autopilot software to determine what is the best uh, sensor to use. Uh 那其中另外一套是在一个没有被减震所覆盖的一个FMU的板上面 so some of the other features on the Pixel 2 that are very useful, um, the IMU is heated. The reason we heat the IMU is you get uh, gyros uh, gyroscopic drift on MEM sensors if you change the temperature that the sensor is, uh, is affected by. So by putting the heater on, we we stabilize the temperature at a, uh, at a temperature that is convenient for your location. Um, by default, we set it at 45 degrees. Now, the Cube of Pickle, the other thing is that it has an IMU gyro. Now, why do we get IMU gyro? Because IMU is different in different conditions. It has a most convenient temperature in about 45 degrees. In this temperature, it has a cooler. 的温调是最小的，所以我们使用我们的内置的加热电阻，将这个温调将IMU的温度维持在四十五度左右，可以让它保证一个最佳的测量的效果。And so by doing that, that means you can calibrate your system once it's up to temperature, and you can be confident that every time you start the vehicle, that the behavior will be consistent. 通过这样的一个温度加热的效果呢？ 我们也可以保证说，我们的IMU每次都在开启之后都处于一个非常平衡、非常稳定的温度中，所以你每次在不同的环境下都可以行，都会是一个稳定的效果，是一个可以预期到的一个效果。The uh, the next feature that we have on the Pixel Two, which we've kept from Pixel One, is the dual processor uh, capability. Now. Um, what that allows us to do is the, the I.O. processor, which is a, a very simple processor. Um, it allows pass-through of RC commands when the flight controller, or if the flight controller fires. Now,另外一个我们从PixSoft的第一代传承下来的一个特性呢,就是这一套飞控系统中有两个主处理芯片。那么一个处理芯片是负责主要的运算,另外一个负责主要的输入和输出。那么它所能达到的效果就是，当如果主芯片在运算中出现故障或者停运的话，那么呃，不，呃，I/O的芯片就是副芯片，它可以做一个冗余的效果，能够保证飞控在啊进行手动的一些简单的操作，至少不会保
and we have a uh, green cube as well. 那麼我在這裡想講一下我們Cube,Cube飛控的不同的版本,那麼你們可能已經看到說我們在市面上有兩種,目前有兩種不同版本的Cube,一個是黑色的,一個是綠色的。So the, the black cube um, is our standard cube, and the, uh, the feature it has is it's uh, got 3.3 volt PWM out which in the industry nowadays is very standard. Um, unfortunately, there are some vehicles out there that have uh, accessories like ESCs um, that cannot uh, operate reliably on a 3.3 volt signal due to either the design of the ESC or the overall system. A very good example of this is the Solo drone, um, where it has an ESC that has some limitations. So uh, we introduced the green cube, which has a 5 volt PWM out, and the advantage of that is it gives us much more headroom on the signal quality, um, and the, that allows us to uh, have reliable ESCs. Uh,那么我们的黑色版本是目前面对市面上大部分机型的一个标准的版本。那么它的一个特性就是它的PWM也就是控制电条的。卖充输入是一个3.3伏的输入 yeah, so the immediate effects, which you can see, if any of you do have a solo that has uh, running that is running the latest Argent Pilot code, is you'll see that you get a significant performance improvement from the vehicle. And this is because we don't have to put software limitations on the motors to protect them. Uh, one thing that will be talked about later uh, this afternoon, um, all of our cubes run on uh, Argypilot Nardex, and then coming soon we have Argypilot Chibios, which uh, Siddharth will talk about later, um, which is quite an advantage. Okay, so that's what we have at the moment, and um, what I'm going to show you is the cube that I'm working on at the moment, um, and hopefully we have the hardware that finished um, for early development early next year. Um, so uh, that's the cube red. So we're going to stick with colors rather than numbers because it's more fun. So Everybody knows if you paint a car red, it goes faster. So, if you paint a car red, it goes faster. So, I guess this one is double the processing speed of the current um, cube. So, we have uh, yeah, double the, the instructions per second. We also have a uh, dual precision floating point and uh, a lot more RAM. 
呃，那么这款的特性就是它拥拥有呃两倍的处理速度，基于呃相比于现在的产品的飞控，以及呃双浮点的一个呃运算的特性，同时可以呃保证更更加快速和更加稳定的处理性能。So what that allows us to do is、uh, for those familiar with how the EKF system works in Autopilot. Um, the EKF is run independently for each、uh, IMU set. 呃，那么如果大家熟悉 Autopilot， 呃，里面所运行的 EKF 系统，也就是呃延展性的哈曼滤波系统的话，大家可能知道说目前的 EKF 系统是针对于每一每一套 IMU 进行运行的。So on the on the cube black. We don't quite have enough、uh, computing resources there to run three instances of the EKF.、Um, we we probably will when we move to Chibios. Thank you to Sid. So、um, that will be very good.、Um, but on the F7, we will have、uh, heaps of computing power left over, which means that we can genuinely run the three IMUs in a genuine redundant、uh, setup. Ah,、uh, 那么呃，大家可能知道说，我们在目前的黑色的 Q 五飞控版本里面呢，我们没办法做到说在呃每一套 IMU 单独的运行一套的 EKF 系统，因为这样会造成很大的一个运算量，而且我们有三套的 IMU 系统，不可能没办法做到三个 EKF 同时运行。而在我们新的增强了处理性能的 Q 五红色版本中呢，就可以做到三个并行的真正的冗余的系统同时运作。So yeah, I'd like to thank、uh, Sid and Paul especially for their work on EKFs and the Chibios, which is going to just breathe new life into this whole system. Ah,、uh, 那这里我要感谢 Sid 和 Sid and Paul, right? Paul, Paul Rasper 在 EKF 以及操作系统上面进行的努力。那通过 Sid 的 Chibios。可以将我目前的 Autopilot 运行的呃负载的负载量大大减少，同时才能够进行我们更多的 EKF 的运算。Uh, another feature we're adding is that the the PWM output will be now software definable as 3.3 volt or 5 volt, depending on what you need. 那么另外一个特性就是我们新的版本中，我们的 PWM 的输出电压是。是一个可以定义的数值，也就是说五伏或者三点三伏，针对于你们的机型可以自定义。Um, there'll be some more features of the Cube Red, but we'll、uh, we'll announce them later. But they, we've got some cool stuff coming up with it. 呃，那么还有更多的呃呃增强的特性，那么我会在之后再进行公布。The biggest feature about the Cube infrastructure is the compatibility. So, the design process, the, the design philosophy of this is to keep compatibility、uh, with external hardware. So, any carrier board that is designed that fit the Pixel 2.0, which was the one we did when I was still at 3D Robotics,、um, will work on all of these cubes as well. <coughs> 那么我们在设计 Q 的飞控的时候，一个非常显著的一个设计目的就是它的可兼容性，因此我们啊采取了这个模块化的设计。那么这意味着什么呢？意意味着我们在市面上啊可能会有各种各样的飞控的载板，那么我们的 Q 可以飞控啊可以适配飞面市面上的各种飞控的载板。So potentially, if you want to down the track, you already have systems that are running Q Black. You can update just by changing the cube. You don't have to change everything else. 那么可能你已经有一套飞控的载板，或者自定义啊自己制造的飞控载板。那么啊，你可能也有一个飞控啊黑色版本的 Cube 飞控。那么如果你想要升级到红色版本的 Cube 飞控的话，你不需要把整套无人机的系统给啊更换掉，你也不需要更换载板，你只需要把黑色的飞控替换成红色的飞控就可以。So moving forward, we're um. We're really going to be concentrating on、uh, how accessories work together and、uh, expanding what you can do with the system. 那么呃，接下来呢，我们会呃继续专注于我们啊飞控以及飞控的一些配件，以及它们之间如何通信和协作，进行更更好的飞行效率。
So I'll just run through these next couple of slides pretty quickly because you're already probably familiar with the standard carrier board. Um, this is just the bare carrier board. There's no room for a companion computer or anything underneath, but obviously you can plug a companion computer in through one of the serial ports if you want to. 那麼這款是我們可能大家已經熟悉的飛控啊標準版的載板,也就是它在上面沒有太多多餘的空間給我們進行一些協同處器的一些連接,當然你也可以在打開來然後將一個Inter-Edison的一個出的芯片插入它的
which will add things like uh, digital compassing and things like that, which uh, obviously are very useful for uh, maintaining accurate heading when you're flying off ships or you're flying anywhere where there is magnetic interference. Uh, so there's a few extra features that will come with that. Uh, it also means that your serial ports are now empty for other things. Uh,一个状态,那么两个GPS都是通过串行总线,也就是,呃,serial进行通信的。那么,serial的,呃,一个限制就是,目前导致我们目前只能在,只能使用两个GPS,那么如果我们改用了CAN,呃,总线的话,
，尽管它非常的小，它只有一个手指头那么大的一个大小，但是它在上面有非常呃完备的一个呃设备支持，其中包括了一个呃雷达，激光雷达的传感器，还有一个呃 ICM。Inventions 的 IMU 系统，以及一套呃用于光流的摄像头，这些全部都被集成在了一个呃非常小的一个呃 PCB 板中。那么，同时它也是走的摊种线，可以保证它的呃性能的稳定性以及抗噪的能力。So the、uh, the lidar on this is a four meter ranging system. So anyone who just got a a Phone that was just released just recently might be familiar with this device.、Um, it was released on a very special 10-year anniversary phone. The now some people say four meters is not very far for optical flow, and that's correct.、Um, you can still obviously use a lightweight lidar with this for、um, when you're using optical flow over that height. But if you're flying indoors, obviously in a room like this, four meters is plenty. Um, and if you're flying in many、um, many places where you're filming people, or you just need that extra bit of stability, or you're going up trees,、uh, this will work without having to have any extra components on your vehicle. Ah,、uh, 那么我想特别说一下这个，在这一个呃、uh, Ken 光流模块上面的呃、uh, lidar 测距模块，那么它非常的小，可能在你们呃、uh, 最新版本的手机中，它会被用来做一个。呃，摄像头的测距，那么它我们使用的，它在这个产品中，虽然它只有一个四米的一个测距能力，尽管你可能会说这个四米并不足够，但是我们同时还可以支持呃更多的，比如说呃 lidar、lidar light 等等的激光模块，还有比如说呃呃 light wear 的呃激光模块，那么可以保证更远距离，四十米以上，呃甚至一百米，以及嗯。呃更加准确的一个精确的测量效率，但是如果你只需要一个在室内的稳定飞行，或者是，嗯，在一个比较小范围的稳定飞行的话，使用四米的一个激光测距已经足够。啊、uh, ，airspeed sensors for fixed wing will be releasing a CAN bus version of that as well.、Um, You'll notice that I have a bit of a habit of putting IMUs on everything.、Um, there'll be a magnetometer on this as well,、um, and the reason for that is normally where you're putting your airspeed sensor is actually away from everything else, so it's actually a really good position often for your compass.、Um, being this is a CAN device and it will be parametrized, you'll be able to turn on which sensor you want where you want, so you can set your vehicle up how you need it. 啊、那么我们同时也在设计，准备啊、呃、发布一款基于空总线的呃呃测速模块，对，啊、呃、空速计。那么同时它也兼顾了空的一个非常良好的特性，同时也啊、呃、具备了一个 ICM 的呃 IMU 系统，能够保证它的测量时的一个呃更加精准。同时这个 IMU 系统还可以被用来做一个。呃，飞行器的 IMU 测量，因为它被我们将它装在呃空速计上面的一个理由是，呃，它可以远离在飞控中可能遇到的一些各种各样的电子干扰，而空速计你可能将它放在一个非常远离电子干扰的地方，所以而且它通过看总天进通信，所以你可以通过参数将它呃选择它或者是不选择它，同时可以通过参数设置它离中心点的位置。The、uh, the next thing is quite interesting that、uh, is being worked on.、Um, Jonathan Challenger, who will be talking later,、um, is、um, helping on the code for this, and he was also helping on the code for the、uh, the optical flow.、Uh, this is an indoor positioning system. Some of you might be familiar with ultra wideband.、Um, we call it indoor, but、um, the first application that we'll be using it for is actually outdoor, and that's for precision landing. Um, so we'll be using it to、uh, to land in in areas that are very confined and、uh, subject to GPS multipathing.、Um, so basically, this involves putting、um, radios on the ground or on walls in fixed locations, 
and using it, it's like GPS, but it's a much smaller area. The accuracy tends to be somewhere around the 10 to 15 centimeters, um, but it gives you uh, a very predictable results within that. So we'll be releasing these quite soon. They're, they're, they're quite small. Um, they're not, they don't do anything other than this. Um, they're just a uh, positioning radio. Uh, 先進的項目是基於看重線的UWP型 there's a, there's a fair bit of work to go on this, and you'll notice on the, the CAN stuff that I'm showing, uh, at the moment we have bootloaders that uh, allow you to put code on there. Um, we'll be releasing a developer edition of these first, and obviously like everything else, we hope we get developers uh, grabbing these devices and starting to work with them and building some cool stuff with them. Okay, so the next one we've been working on uh, for quite a long time. We actually started the CAN ESC project in 2013. Um, it's had a few false starts and um, we're finally to the stage where um, it's actually flying on a solo, which is really cool. Uh, we've also been flying on a uh, on route lab uh, vehicles, and uh, we're really, really quite happy with the support that uh, on route has given to this. Thank you, Mr. Isusan. Um, it's been really good. The the advantage of um, FOC on an ESC is that the, it gives you a increased flight time, uh, better efficiency, um, which is very nice. Um, there's there's um, a few other advantages as well. Um, basically, the, the biggest thing that we're looking at on the CAN side of things is getting feedback, um, so we actually know what's going on with the ESC. Um, things like uh, if your if your bearing is failing or something like that, your motor will probably start taking uh, more current to do a given task, and so we can start measuring things like that. We can look at vibration, we can uh, look at position, we can look at uh, lots of things within the ESC. 另外一个已经持续了一段时间的项目呢是基于Kenzong线的一个电桥系统 呃，给我们带来的支持，能够让我们继续这个呃来呃这个Kenzong线的ESC项目。那么使用Kenzong线在ESC上面呢，有的它的优势在于我们可以因此得到更多的反馈，也就是呃因此我们能够得知从Ken
做一个呃测试平台，通过 3D R Solo 的电机，然后连使用我们的 CAD E S C 进行呃进行协作协同作业，那么我们已经取得了一些效果，呃，同时呃这款 E S C 本身它其实可以负载更多的呃机型，它可以支持呃高于四十安。呃，低于四十安的电流传输，那么在 Solo 上面只它只需要十二安，所以这款呃 E S C 它可以被用在更多的机型上面。我们也欢迎更多的开发者接下来能够使用这款 E S C。So we have a new version that we're also starting to work on here within the, the project. This project is called Open Motor Drive. 那么我们还有一个呃。新的项目正在开展，我们把它叫做 Open Motor Drive， 也就是开放的电机驱动系统。And the next version will、um, have a F7 processor and have a triple isolated CAN bus、uh, for flight critical situations。呃，那么接下来的我们会开发一款基于 STM F7 的系统 ，F F7 的呃芯片的 ESC， 那么它可以进行一个呃。呃，三重的一个分离 CAN bus 的一个 CAN 总线的一个设计，能够完成更多的飞行。Okay, many people have been asking for a smaller carrier board, and、uh, right at the moment we have en route.、Oh, sorry, Elad,、uh, in Japan,、uh, are currently putting together a prototype of this board, and.、Um, I'm, I'm very keen to see the、uh, results of this.、Um, originally, we were looking at what features we would need to take off to make it smaller, and、um, we want to have a look at it. We have the full, the same number of、um, PWM as the full carrier board. It's just that、uh, the six FMU ones are just a pin each without a、uh, without a multi trail. Uh, we have serial ports one through four, and we have one CAN port and one I2C port、uh, on the system, and we still have the redundant、uh, power input. So、uh, this board is the same size as the the Q, with the addition of the extra two power、um, modules on the on the end. So it's it's quite compact compared to the existing carrier board.、Um, But yet, still has most of the functions. So, look forward to seeing some of that stuff coming soon. <coughs> Japanese market gets it first. Sorry. 那么，呃，很多人都想要一款更加小的飞控载板，基于我们 Cube 的飞控载板。那么，在这里我也设计了一款，呃 ，Mini Carry Board， 就是迷你版的载板。那么它同时具有非常强大的特性。它基本上具有呃标准的载板所拥有的所有的接口，比如说呃，十四 PWM， 呃，十四个 PWM 的输出，呃，是和标准版是一样的，以及呃冗余的两个呃电源输入系统，以以及呃串口一到四都包含在内，同时一个 I 方 C 的接口以及一个 CAN 总线的接口，那么这样可以保证一个。嗯，在小的载板上面依然有一个非常良好的接口，接口的呃兼容性。Like everything in this project, it's a collaboration.、Um, so you'll see on the、uh, on the thing we have Elab, Profi CNC, and Hex.、Um, without companies working together, none of this works. 呃，那么同时，大家也可以看到这个依然是一个合作的产品。啊、呃，我们通过了各个公司的努力，才呃。才能够完成这样的产品。我们可以看到上面有 Elab 来自日日本的 o n r o u t Elab 公司，以及 o f f i c e CNC 以及克星 Hex 公司共同的努力。A、uh, big theme at the moment is co-computing. Basically, there are so many options that people can use、um, with their with their、um, drones, and as far as doing additional systems. Uh, Elab have、uh, OpenPy running on the、uh, TX1, TX2.、Uh, we have obviously the IMX6 running in the Solo, doing the,、uh, sol the Solo link and now Open Solo, the open source version of that.、Um, we have people using the the Obroid for、uh, quite a long time, and obviously the Raspberry Pi 
and obviously the Edison. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of options there, and you're not limited to what you want to do there. That's that's open to your creativity. Um, we love seeing what people do with their co-computing. Um, there's some pretty incredible stuff. Uh,那么一个趋势呢，呃，是目前大家都非常的常用的，是协同处理的一个呃运算方式。那么我们看到有很多的协同处理的使用方式，比如说呃，来自Unroot的。uh, OpenKai Tau Okay, now we get to the fun bit. It, we've got a bunch of companies out there, um, Spectreworks, who have done an incredible job of uh, lots of carrier boards, um, that are taking the Pixel 2 Cube to the next level and integrating it into systems in a really professional way. Um, obviously, the first system that was that hit the market with the Pixel 2 in it was the Solo, and that was an example of what could be done. Um, and the guys at Spectreworks have done an incredible job for themselves and for other companies. Um, there's boards for UAV solutions down there. We have this one for um, uh, radio planes, uh, Swift radio planes, um, and uh, a few others here as well. This one up here was pretty much that was the original. Is that right? Yeah, that was yeah. the original. For a large scale solo. Yeah, so, so this one was basically being able to set up a vehicle that would act like a solo. So it could do the, the smart shots that a solo could do, but you could put whatever camera you could think of underneath. Um, I've seen some incredible versions of uh, large solos. Um, there's one that I saw with two red epic cameras underneath doing um, doing smart shots. Um, people people just You've got to look a little bit further past what a solo is and what the actual system is capable of. And it's it's pretty cool. Uh,那么接下来我们看到的是一张非常精彩的图片，其中包含了我在和啊我们在和Spectrum uh, 针对无人机的应用这其中可以兼容各种各样的应用以及行业的一些需求。Obviously, the first two that uh, we're going to get uh, the Pixel 2 was was actually Iris. The the original plan before before anyone knew anything about Solar, the original plan was that uh, Iris was going to get an upgrade. And this is the product. This is the prototype board from 3D Robotics with the uh, the Pixel 2 on board, and as you can see, an Edison down there at that stage. Um, and then obviously that evolved into what became the the Solo. This one being upgraded with a modern cube. Uh,那么在我们早期呢，我们是在呃Iris的升级版本中进行测试我们的Pixel 2的 你们可以在图片中看到，这个是一个以Iris的机身为形状的一个呃飞控载板。当时呃，我们正在研发基于Iris的一个升级版本，是测试了我们的Pixel 2 Cube飞控。So this this is a great example of why the cube is so important. Um, this board didn't need any modification, any changes whatsoever. And we've upgraded all the sensors, the autopilot, everything. And next year, Solo will get the Red Cube. And so it will get double the processing power, 
nearly three times the memory, um, better, pro better sensors, um, without having to change anything on the solo, other than the cube. And so every board that Spectreworks makes is now compatible with everything that I will make next year and the year after that, and the year after that. So it means that everything can be future-proof, um, which is a, a big advantage for companies designing um, aircraft. Uh, 那么这也是我们开发的Cube产品的优雅之处所在 uh, this, this one here is an example of one of the Spectreworks boards in a Swift Radio Planes aircraft. Um, this aircraft used to have a lot of wires in it. Um, it, it used to be a very complex, um, uh, complex build, whereas now we have... Oops, wrong button. Whereas now we have a power wire and a couple of wires to accessories and other than that, like the GPS, everything is, is in this stack up. Um, it makes it a lot, a lot uh, nicer. And the guys at Spectreworks have done an incredible job. The guys at Swift Radio Planes or SRP.ero um, have done a great job in this system. So just wanted to show this as to how you can make your aircraft look a lot more professional um, and use professional techniques to actually make it more reliable as well. Every connection you get out of your aircraft is one less point of failure. So, yeah. That's it from me. Okay, uh, in, in this PPT, we are showing you how you can make your personal personalities and more we 将他们的飞机变得更加的简洁使用载板的方式